And just like that, we're back with New Gen Nation meets the International Manager of Mystery. We're back with the Cayman Islands. We've fast-forwarded a couple of years. It's 2033. We're back on the road to the World Cup, to the 2034 World Cup. We're also closing in on an unbeaten run at the same ground where we had our very last defeat. Let's get right to it. <laughs> Hello there everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the International Manager of Mystery Meets New Gen Nation, the playthrough experiment in which we've taken 10 of the top clubs in the world for producing youth talent and transported them to the Cayman Islands so they produced Cayman Islands regens and see if those regens can take the Cayman Islands all the way to international success. Well, we had a taste of the World Cup back in 2030, and now we're getting to the nitty-gritty of qualifying for 2034, and that's going to be the focus of today. You'll see here the news item. We are now just a matter of time away from setting a new record for matches without defeat. We've got 15 matches undefeated, and we're looking in on the record. Let's have a check what the record actually is, because that it's not actually clear if it's, if it's 15 or not. Um, where are we? There we go, most matches without losing. We're currently on 15. We previously reached 15 all the way back in the rose-tinted days of 2029. So we're on 15. Avoid defeat today against Canada. And we will be on 16 and setting a new record. Let's have a look at some of the other records, actually. So our youngest ever player, Theron Wood, at 15 years and 282 days. That's amazing. He's retired when he was 18. I guess, you know, he'd reached the heights of the world game so that's it our most capped player of course who else would it be but emerson skeet now 28 years old on 113 caps the liverpool world-class midfielder 84 million pound values on 250 thousand pounds a week all wisely invested offshore of course and we look at his career record barcelona liverpool we can see liverpool he's a regular First team regular there. In terms of his milestones, let's just check in on Skeet. What's he won at Liverpool? Not a great deal, it has to be said. Community Shield, an FA Cup. He also, for some reason, was in the under-23s when they won the Premier Division. Runner-up in the Champions League. But, you know, he's he's one of the world's top players. Most goals in a season. Nkuma Fagan, you'll remember from our 2031 Gold Cup run, I'm sure. He was fantastic there. Bit of a strange one, Fagan. He was released by Barcelona, having never made it to the first team there. He then spent an entire year without a club, before eventually returning to the Cayman Islands League and signing for Latinos FC, where he's on an amateur contract and he's just living off the glory of two years ago. And I've just realised the most matches without losing is right down here in this sequences tab. Never mind, I'll pay more attention next time. And you see here we're also we're continuing that steady climb up the world rankings. We're now 59th in the world. Our opponents today in our first game, Canada, are, let's just check, 54th. So that's pretty even. I've got to show you the group, actually. It's by no means guaranteed that we're getting back to the World Cup. Now, World Cup qualifying, in, uh, in North America, we have two rounds of kind of uh, home and away leg knockouts, and depending on where you're seeding, you'll come in at different points. We're seeded so that we come in in the second round. Um, then, obviously, the likes of USA, Mexico, and so on are seeded to go straight into the group stage. Then the group stage, I believe, is it just the top team that goes through, or is it the top two? It's the top two that go through. Which sounds great, except we're in here with Canada and Jamaica. So, two teams that are beatable for us. I mean, we've beaten Jamaica before. They're currently ranked 30th in the world, but there's no guarantees. I mean, we saw that in the Nations League last time out when we were in there with Canada and Trinidad and Tobago. We could not top that group. El Salvador are also here. They are a bit lower down in the world rankings, 102nd, so that should be a guaranteed six points in the bag. We're going to play El Salvador in the second match today, and then from there it's going to be Gold Cup. But anyway, uh, let me talk you through results since the last time we were here, which the last episode being that Nations League campaign where we finished second in Division A, couldn't make the finals, avoided relegation. Uh, we'll come back to the Nations League another time. 
But since that, well, as I said, the last time we were actually defeated in a match was away to Canada, which is our first match today, when we lost 1-0 in that Champions League, ah, uh, Champions League, Nations League game, which proved to be very costly. After that, we were unbeaten for the rest of the Nations League campaign, and then uh, I won't go through the matches one by one, but you can have a look at the results yourselves here. Lots of these, it was a bit frustrating. We got quite a few smaller teams in here, like St. Martin um, and so on. Uh, part of the reason for that was I would arrange friendlies and then they'd be cancelled because of teams being involved in other competitions and other qualifying pools and so on. But you see, we went through wins right through to September. We uh, took on a few Asian teams. We beat Saudi Arabia. And we thrashed North Korea. Uh, we had well-earned hard-fought draws away to Qatar and China then we see the teams that we're in this qualifying group with we've played them all recently in friendlies we stuffed El Salvador 6-3 the three is a bit of a worry but you know we scored plenty past them we held Jamaica to a draw and we beat Canada 1-0 with a late goal so those Jamaica Canada games are really going to be tight uh, we entered as I said the World Cup qualifying in the second round we had Guyana um, I'm not sure about this. I mean, it was great that we were free-flowing, scoring lots of goals, but we still conceded. It was 11-5 on aggregate over those two legs. Uh, we just um, went to sleep a little bit. I mean, you see there, we charged into um, an early lead. We were 3-0 up. We let them come back into it a bit. Uh, you know, we, we just took our foot off the gas a little bit in that second half there. And then in the away game, similar story. 3-0 up by half-time. Ties almost over. They scored twice. That kind of spurred us into sec a second wind, if you like. But, you know, I'm not happy about conceding five. Anyway, today, Canada, El Salvador will be looking to get points on the board. Four points minimum, six points better. Then the Gold Cup comes in the summer. You see, we've got Jamaica again. And we're in there with Haiti, Jamaica, Granada. That's going to be the next episode. It will be that group stage of the Gold Cup. Then we'll come back to finish off World Cup qualifying with that double header at home, Canada and Jamaica. So I expect it's going to be between the three of us. So that could be a big, big episode. But hopefully it's going to take us a while to get there because if it takes us a while to get there, that means we've got out of our Gold Cup group. We've got into the quarterfinals. Hopefully we can do a repeat of last time and get to the final as well. Of course, 18 months or so has passed uh, in game time since the last episode, so we've had a few uh, rotations, a few changes in the squad. Now you'll notice a lot of the surnames repeat. Um, I like to think of these as clans of Cayman Islands' famous footballing families, and for the first time we see featured uh, the McLean, the McLean clan. So we've got Fernando McLean. 19-year-old left-back at Manchester United. He's had three caps for us already. He's currently on three-and-a-half-star current, five-star potential ability. Of course, that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be a wonder kid, but possibly he's going to end up playing in League One or something like that, but that's fine. We'll take it. So, Fernando McLean is in the team, and so is Jerome Lee McLean. Um, currently back in the Cayman Islands, 23 years old. You see six caps and three goals, and with a forehead like that it's a surprise his heading and jumping reach are so low we've also seen the rise of the glidden clan now this particular player in the squad today again from manchester united from the glidden elliott footballing family in the cayman islands a fusion of two of the great footballing families there are a couple of other glidden's also center backs they're kind of on the fringes of the squad they're also quite young but uh, you can expect to see the name glidden a bit more in the future and we've also had a resurgence of the Ebanks clan of late. So we've got here Christopher Ebanks. Um, you may have seen him in the previous episode. I'm not entirely sure. Also from Manchester United, they're sweeping them all up at the moment. Nine caps and three goals for this midfielder. Also in attacking midfield, we've got Darwin Ebanks. Three caps and one goal so far, but playing very well in that attacking midfield role. And up front, we've got Alfredo Connolly Ebanks. Four caps and one goal so far. Barcelona this time rather than Manchester United can play on the right wing or up front. He's got pace. He's got pace. His finishing's crap, so we're going to play him on the wing, but he's got case. He's got pace and he can cross. And also on the goalkeeping front, we know Ricardo Ribeiro. Ribeiro, the Mexican wall, the wall that kept the Mexicans out in the Gold Cup final so bravely two 
years ago. Well, um, even though he's not actually a new gen, he was a Portuguese player who took up nationality from the Cayman Islands after his Portuguese team were transported here. He does now have a, a, a nephew, I guess, David Lopez Ribeiro, who's come in. Maybe it's his stepson. We'll go with stepson because, um, you know, the age doesn't quite work out for a father-son relationship. But we'll go with stepson. That's why it's Lopez Ribeiro, 18 years old. You see, he's displaced old stepdad from the team a little bit with um, five caps so far. So Canada are home and favourites, of course. We are missing David Wood Roach, who's our other big superstar player. He's unfortunately suspended, having picked up a couple of bookings in those Guyana matches. But this is how we're lining up in our classic 4 2 3 1. So Ribiera and goal, Ebanks Webb and Glidden Elliott in the centre of defence to replace him Wood Roach. You know, it's got to be double barreled surnames in the defence for Cayman Islands. And then we've got Connolly Ebanks, another one for the Ebanks clan. I don't think I showed you him. 20 years old, 13 caps so far on the books at Barcelona, though currently out on loan. We've got McLean at left bank, Skeet and Rowe. That is the ultimate partnership in the middle of the park. Coleman in his attacking midfield role. We've got Elliot. Elliot's really come on uh, for us. 18 years old now, 15 caps and 7 goals. He's really been tearing it up for the national team, keeping Fagan on the bench. Solomon out on the right. Rig up front coming back into the squad after a bit of an injury layoff. But we'll, um, you know, he'll have to be performing well because he's got those youngsters breathing down his necks. Classic 4 4 2 from the Canadians. We've got to watch out for Miller. We know him from the FC Andorra save. Go out there and show everyone what you're capable of. We're not going to complicate things much more than that. Oh, and we've got a tunnel interview. Charles Andreas Brim. I honestly don't know who he is. 34-year-old winger. Sure, I'm, I guess they're going to miss him. Um, Connolly Ebanks will be fine. Don't worry about a thing. Right, then we've got a corner here. Who's it for? It, oh, it's a free kick, actually, for the Cayman Islands. And it's Skeet just rocketing it into the top corner. Absolutely fantastic strike from the Liverpool world-class midfielder. He, he knew exactly what he was going to do. I'm surprised the Canadians only put up a two-man wall. He just fired that one in. Real rifle of a shot. Off to a good start. Okay, Canadians looking to get back into it before the half-time whistle blows. They're building something out on that side. But Elliot, Elliot's picked it up. Plays it up. Rig holds it up nicely. Nearly gets dispossessed, running a bit of a risk there. Ebanks Webb brings it forward, and Skeet, here's the man. Skeet works the magic in the middle of the park. Good vision there to spot the fullback. The cross, though, was you know a bit too high, a bit too close to the keeper, and now we've got to watch for a quick break, or maybe the Canucks have to watch for a quick break. Here comes Coleman. Is he going to shoot? No, he lays it off for Carson Solomon. That is a peach of a goal. Counter-attacking football at its finest. Absolutely great strike from Solomon. There's no way the keeper was going to stop that. No keeper on earth was keeping that shot out. Coleman, you know, so many times in FM we see them shoot in that situation, but he laid it off. Solomon played his role to perfection. King Solomon's mine. I mean, my player. Right then, here we go. Chance for another goal before half time. Would that be greedy? Well, it goes to the keeper. The uh, rig is closing him down, trying to put him under pressure, but it didn't quite work. But Roe mops up. We have really improved since the last time we played Canada, that's for sure. Or well, certainly the last time we played them in Toronto, where despite Old Lady Play's hospitality, we weren't able to get the win. But anyway, here comes Solomon. Whips one in. No, the cross is cleared. And now Canada looking to get that goal before the break. Good defending, and it's 2-0 at half-time. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, don't let your performance levels drop. That's what we've gone with. No changes, no substitutions, just get back out there. We've got to keep an eye on Ebanks Webb, who's sitting there on a yellow. But it's, a, it's an overall good performance so far. Rose not having the best game, perhaps, but everyone else is playing a decent match. Skeet, obviously, the star of the team, the engine of the midfield. Right, we're going to make a couple of changes. Rig, I'm going to take off for one of our youngsters, Ashley Mahone. I'll show you uh, his profile quickly if I can. 17 years old, so that's why you've got to forgive the little, uh, the little tiny beard there. But, you know, he's trying his best. But he's got finishing of 16. 
Um, could we've got to work on his pace a bit, but he has scored for us already. We'll be looking for him to add a few more goals today. Right, here come Canada. They're trying to get the cross in now, but we oof, we just about dealt with the ball. We just about cleared it. Let's see if we can get mm, we can get it clear from here and get that third goal that we've been looking for. But no, it looks like it's going to be Canada's chance and Liam Miller, but he is offside. The goal will not stand and we get away with that bit of a scare. But yeah, clearly, as you can see from there, clear offside. OK, a couple more substitutions in the final 10 minutes and um, being a little bit complacent in that we're 2-0 up and I think we've got this in the bag. So Darwin Ebanks, Connolly Ebanks, get your competitive caps so that you don't defect to England in the future. I will show you another one who's defected to England in between matches today. Yes, we've beaten Canada 2-0 away. The perfect result, that just what we needed today. We can see Jamaica have also beaten El Salvador in their other game, so oh, it's, it's all off to a start in this World Cup qualifying campaign. Very proud of you boys. Well done. Let's get on to the second game. You see here, this is something I do in terms of trying to get some of those dual nationality players. I keep a list of players who've got Cayman Islands declared as their second nationality and try to turn them. It's worked with a few players. Uh, we've got these ones here, though. Jed Murphy, Ramon Lee Lewis, and a new one, Claude Ney Wilson. They've been on this list for a while, but they turn me down every time I approach them. Uh, Jonah Coleman, one of the early ones to defect. He's an Emerson Skeet level player, but he's, you know, getting the caps for England now. Nicholas Murphy has a handful of caps, or 30 caps, if you call that a handful. The new one, though, this was gutting. Christopher Robinson, you see this, 19 years old, worth £47 million. Central defender, he's already been capped three times for England. I tried, I tried, I spoke to him so many times, but he said, no, I'm going to play for England, and, well, he has. Ah, and there we go. Just confirmation after that kind of the game. We did it. New record. 16 games unbeaten. Let's make it 17. So here we are then, El Salvador. I do believe this is the first time we've played them competitively and played them in an episode in this series. Now, we've made a few changes to our team to reflect the fact that we're heavy favourites and we're at home. And yes, we are getting people some first competitive chaps. So... The stepson, Lopez Ribeiro, comes in in goal. Wood Roach comes back in after his suspension. We've also got Christopher Ebanks coming in, making his competitive debut. And we've got Lee McLean up front as well to take on the El Salvadorians. So pick up from where you left off last time. We've got another tunnel interview. We're off to a good start. Yes, my team will play on the front part foot and uh yes it's great to have someone like wood wood roach not wood roach but wood roach in defense we start off early with a free kick ebanks knocks it in and it's so very nearly a goal without even a minute on the clock okay it's cayman islands now with the ball the el salvadorians attempted an attack but the long ball was easily dealt with solomon gets it across to elliot with the header the youngster the young left winger just drifts in, nods that one in. Easy, easy goal. Solomon just ran the length of the half, pretty much unchallenged, just skipped past one, crossed before the other one got anywhere near him. Elliot, in a sea of blue, just rose and got the ball in. Okay, just the 1-0 at half time. It's just 1-0 in the Jamaica-Canada game. We need to stamp our authority on this match, though. We definitely don't want anyone getting complacent. Get out there for that second half, but bag us a few more goals. Corner then for the Cayman Islands. It's going to be Skeet to whip it in. Header goes over, but it was saved by the keeper. So we get a second chance. And Elliot's shot is charged down. Skeet's there waiting to pick it up. Come on, come on, let's get that second goal here. Settle a few nerves. Make sure we don't get sucker punched late in this one. Skeet, come on, he stayed out wide. Gets the cross it's just that final product is not quite there. That's the one thing I think that stopped Cayman Islands from you know, really breaking through uh, to challenge consistently in the CONCACAF zone is the lack of an out-and-out -out goal scorer, a quality striker. We've got a couple of young hopefuls, 
but no one who's, as you know, able to be a guaranteed source of goals. Oof, Elliot. Elliot almost got his second of the night there. What's that? You want to see more of young Ashley Mahone? Well, I will oblige you. He comes on. He's going to play as a poacher. Go on then, we'll bring on Fagan as a crowd pleaser. Elliot's having a good game, but he's very tired. So uh, we'll let him rest uh, and let him enjoy you feel that pleasure that you know a young men should of watching the Cayman Islands do their thing on the pitch. And here we go, a throw in for us. Coleman then whips the ball in. Ebanks picks it up. Just El Salvador just cannot keep the ball in this match. That's the big problem for them. We win possession when it counts, and as I say that, of course, we give it away. Are we going to win it back off them now, or are they going to really embarrass me here? Um, there you go. We we won it back. A, a hit and hope pass. Uh, come on, you've got someone free on the side, but you don't need him. Carson Solomon with another bullet shot. He does like to bang them in, doesn't he? Old Solomon, second time in two games, he's just absolutely thwacked one as hard as he possibly could. Just one touch to control it, and then he's just like, have some of that. Okay, final substitution of the day will be Woodroach, just because he's only had one cap, and I don't think it was competitive. And, you know, we've had that same problem as FM Lama with Northern Mariana Islands, of goalkeepers in particular switching their allegiance to England, even when they're rubbish and they've got no chance of playing for either national team. Anyway, we deal with that threat from El Salvador. Or do we? They come back at us now. Come on, boys, let's grab that third goal. Settle the nerves, settle the nerves. So we have no squeaky bum time. Uh, oh, decent effort from El Salvador, has to be said. Corner then. Are we going to get something here? Yes, we are. It's the man, Fagan. He's just in the right place at the right time. Uh, the assist's given to Skeet, because he did take the corner, but it should have been given to that central defender, Carrillo, who just headed it straight into Fagan's path. Is there time for one more? It's Solomon marauding down the right wing. He's going to whip in his cross to the back post. Coleman, though, couldn't get a shot off. And now the break's on for El Salvador. Uh, it's going to be too little too late, but they do score. It's Castro with a pretty good goal, it has to be said. But I hope, I hope that's too little too late. OK, final highlight. Let's make this count. Let's not give the ball away to El Salvador in a dangerous position. Less than a minute to go. Just 40 seconds on the clock. Come on, boys. Let's wrap this one up. Nice overlapping run from Connolly Ebanks. And, oh, oh, it does go in. It's Ashley Mahone. It's Ashley Mahone, the youngster with the triangular beard, the mini goatee. He gets the goal after a bit of confusion in the defense just to make sure just to make sure, step things up when El Salvador started to threaten. You see that? Oh, it just stops dead. <laughs> Carrillo doesn't know what to do. Um, I think he's he's not played much football before Carrillo after he uh, after he set up Fagan for the second goal and just stood there literally ball watching for that one. Four one it finishes then, and that puts us top of the group on goal difference. Well, we'll tell the team good win, a uh, bit of an entertaining game with some mishaps from the El Salvadorians, but, you know, you've got to take the wins wherever you can get them. So there you go, Cayman Islands are on course for another World Cup appearance. Well, though a couple of away games in September, Jamaica away, that's going to be a crucial one indeed. Well, Canada have not got off to a great start. They started with the tough games, Cayman Islands and Jamaica. They lost both of them, so they've got some ground to make up. If we can get a point away to Jamaica and a win at Sal El Salvador, then, you know, we could wrap this up early, dare we say. But now we switch our focus to the Gold Cup. We're in there with Haiti, Jamaica and Granada. I'm just going to show you the full draw quickly so you can see how it looks. So um, I think, you know, the, most of those groups, they should be fairly predictable as to how they go. We've got USA in Group B, so potential opponents in the quarterfinals. We'll be hoping to avoid them. 
But join me next episode. We're going to blast through those three matches. Goal highlights, just major action highlights of those three games. And we're going to be coming very familiar with Jamaica over the next few months. But for now, I'm Dodgy Gamer, International Manager in Mystery. Thank you very much for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. See you again soon.